Hi guys, I'm Mark. I'm Penny. And we are the Oyster Boys, and today we are going to be reviewing this uh, Zot from Br Bruges Zot. Tell, tell me all about this Bruges Zot, please, Penny. Yeah, so it's from the Half the Half Man Brewery. Uh, so it's a uh, from Bruges Flemish. Uh, it translates as the uh, the half half moon, basically. Uh, so they also do the. Um, uh, Straff Hendrik or the, the Strong Henry um, and the Blanche de Bruges, so the, the uh, Blanche de Bruges, what's that? Uh, do you try to translate what the, the Bruges of the White or the White Bruges? Basically, it must be some white sort of um, wheat beer that they do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the Harpen Brewery, it's a brewery that I visited uh, this time last year. Uh, so, me and my partner went over to Bruges uh, and I said, <laughs> We, before the Oyster Boys was created, yeah. uh, I mean to check out this brewery. Um, so we went and did the brewery tour, uh, and this was basically uh, the talk of the town, should I say? It was uh, their latest sort of product of the of the brewery. So uh, the brewery, it's been around for a long time. It pre dates pre-war. It's one of the only breweries that are still in within the city grounds of Bruges, and Zot translates in Flemish basically is fool. As, as you can probably see he's from the picture, you've got like the Joker there. Uh, yeah. And apparently that's sort of the Belgian view of the people from Bruges. They're sort of crazy, I don't know, uh, a, bit, a bit beery, like their beer sort of thing. They're a bit, I don't know, out there. Uh, hence uh, the fool. So this is sort of named after the people of town. Um, quite an industry brewery so um, it's family owned and it's now into the fifth generation and this is the, the basically the new head brewer that's uh, or the new the latest family member that's sort of come on board should I say or taken over the business this is his beer that he's created of sort of his sort of like um, to be coming of the head brewer should I say so I mean it's six point I know it's in this, the high sixes, if you can see, find out here, six, oh, 6 percent on the dot, so which is actually considered quite a medium <laughs> beer in the Belgium, so it's a session ale for the Belgians, should I say, um, and it was great when we went there, uh, we got to see it, they have, a, would you believe a statue of St Arnold overlooking all the, uh, of the actual brewing process? Um, I, I know I talked about it before. We talked about the monastery breweries, um, especially when we talked about with uh, the wine and stuff and things like that. Well, basically, there's two St. Arnold's. Uh, there was one with uh, based in Metz. I have to be careful with the Metz and Metz. Where basically he told people to drink beer over water because it's made by the, the sweat of man, if that makes sense. So he. Then from that, basically got people drinking beer, and when he passed away, all the people uh, on their sort of pilgrim went to his favourite tip place, and they said, oh, you've only got one mug of beer for all you thousands of people. Well, do you want to know what happened with that mug of beer race? Yeah, tell me, tell me what happened. It never emptied. <laughs> so that one, like one, mug of beer, one mug of beer drank or, you know, kept everyone's thirst for over a thousand people. I don't know about you, but I've heard a similar story about some fish and bread. <laughs> I've heard it once or twice, maybe when I was younger. Yeah, I don't know if it's a famous story or not, I don't know. Anyway, so that's the, the, the uh, Uno, um, sort of, uh, St. Arnold, but the, the main one that's associated with the Bruges, and would you believe their fermentation tanks are still blessed by uh, the abbots? They still come and bless the fermentation uh, vessels to make sure that the e beer is holy. So even though it's not a Trappist beer, they still get monks to come out and bless the Absolutely. Vessels, 2014, yeah. they had a new vessel come in and they, they had the sort of uh, bishop of the area to come in and bless, bless the beer. Well, not the beer, the actual fermentation tanks, yes. Absolutely, they're still 100% for that. So uh, the second St. Arnold, which was the statue that I saw, basically he told people, because they had a, a bout of the plague, so they think the water was contaminated. So he said, drink beer 
don't drink the water. And that's what the people did. And the plate dropped from like, um, to, to, like the cases dropped by like 79% because this water was contaminated and they're drinking a bit and obviously we know you boil beer to over 100 degrees so it kills all the uh, you know the contaminants and the the bacteria that's in it so it technically was more safe to drink beer than it was to drink the local water yeah and and, and, that, and that's where it was and he was the patron saint and there was a little statue over there the whole thing is gravity fed so it starts at the top and finishes at the bottom it was amazing and uh, what they did was they did a, um, a crowd surf to fund uh, a three kilometer beer line from the brewery to the suburbs where they bottle the beer. Well, that's, I was going to ask you about that because even on the side of the bottle, it does say that there is a 3.2 kilometer underground beer pipeline. Yes. under the historical city of Bruges, which is a world's first. So these are the first people ever to have done this. So that and at maximum production, it produces 12,000 bottles of beer per hour. That's the amount of beer that's flowing through those pipes. Wow, that's a so lot. They, yes, so they did the crowd surfing operation. And if you were the lucky person that had enough money in your bank to donate over, uh, I think the limit was uh, 7,500 euros so 7500 euros you will then get a beer per day for the rest of your life i mean i kind of wish i, I kind of wish i knew that was a thing <laughs> do where but do, do you have 7500 euros spare <laughs> that's the thing I, I i could have tried to make i could have made it available <laughs> <laughs> The one beer per day, so um, I, I don't know if the calculations work out, but you know, in the long run, that you know, you come quids up in that. I don't know, but it depends um, how long you live, really, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, but yeah, that's that's that, that's basically. So I love the. Brew. I mean, I've not done a massive amount of brewery uh, tours, but they didn't want to give uh, much away. But as a home brewer, I tell you what was interesting is that they use hot pellets as well. I don't know, I sort of had it in my mind that they would use fresh hops. Uh, I think you but, know, the but, difference between hot, hot pellets and whole leaf hops is a, it's a big thing now. You know, or it, was, it used to be a big thing, yeah. but ultimately a hot pellet, all it is, is ground up hops pressed into a pellet. So it's the same thing. Either yes. Way. Yeah, so but, uh, that, that, that was the only sort of digression I got from the guy giving the tour. He would not give anything away. Yeah, and, and, and no one else was uh, into their brewing, should we say. Um, so when I was questioning the things, he was sort of like, who is this guy? What did, what, why is he asking me so many questions about the recipes? Yeah. What, uh, what, what brewing does this guy work for? But, why is yeah, he trying to steal yeah, this information? Yeah, exactly, yeah. but I, I was uh, genuinely interested. Um, and the, they have beers that you could, that's been aged that you can buy that are, that are 12 months old or you can buy in two age. It's um, a fantastic experience and Bruges is, a fantastic place to visit, is what I would say with that. But that's enough of that. I feel like I spent about 20 minutes talking about this, so we should crack it open. When the world is more back to normal and the Oyster Boys can go out and try beers, it'll be Oyster Boys on tour trying yes. out these beers across the world, right? Well, they do have a tap room and it's great, so. Okay, so uh, without further ado, should we get this beer into the glass? Yeah, okay, yeah. So, what glass are you rocking? I've got this uh, lovely Oyster Boys branded uh, pint glass here. This lovely, it's like a, almost nice. a weird upside down triangle. Well, I, I've got West Marlin glass, but I'm going to put that down. And I do have a nice, oh, Bruce Zot glass with the pipeline no. on the back. Now, there's a few buttes that I would call them buttes because they are buttes that are online. And going, I can't leave your review in a beer without the correct glass. Well, let me tell you this. If you had the correct glass for every single bloody beer you tasted, you'd have a, uh, your house would be full of glassware. <laughs> and <laughs> it'd cost you a lot of money as well, so stop being a beaut, mate, and understand. But this is the Bruges Zot with the pipeline on the back. And, well, it's basically, a, what can I say, a, a, a posh gobbler. Let's get it in this posh gobbler. Let's get it in this posh gobbler. And if it's good as I remember, so it should be, obviously it's an ale, uh, it's a blonde ale. Get a lot of head, which is what I expect from these lovely 
Yeah. Yes. Wow. Is it? Is it? Is it? Um, Mine looks bottle great. Bottle conditioned as well. It is bottle conditioned as well? I think, isn't it? Uh, yes. I, well, I'm saying yes <laughs> without that information, but um, I would assume so. Yes, it is. So I've kept it clear. I haven't poured any of the yeast in. It looks lovely, clear, amber. If this was Jurassic Park. I can imagine a uh, fly in there containing the DNA of a dinosaur. Okay, so the body of the beer, obviously, it's, it's really good. I mean, it's, it's that Belgian beer in the head, held really nice, as you can see in yours. Um, it had that really nice sort of amber hint on the, on the, on the beer. I'm gonna have to score, that, score this really high, I mean, it's exactly what it is, it's slightly translucent. Uh, yeah. It's really good for me, I don't know how you feel. Yeah, it's a fantastic looking beer. It's a tough call between high eights and low nines, really, because it just looks that good. I'm going to go around a, a nine, 9.0. I can have it down, it's, it's got to be a nine. It's got to be a nine. Um, absolutely, it's good. Really nice, really nice beer, so. Okay, let's dive in. So smell it, don't you ace it, I mean I get definitely more, wow, it's really got that sort of summery hoppiness, like spicy uh, pepperiness. It's... Pepperiness and clove as well. I, I can smell like a, it's almost like the smell of a wheat beer, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's surprisingly hot. I mean, it doesn't blow me away, I'm not sweat, but it's when I smell it, uh, I get maybe a hint of that fruitiness that you get from the ale, but um, yeah. It's got that happiness as well. Um, it's an all-round. I mean, it's never going to blow me away. The Belgian Belgian beers aren't known for their, you know, their aroma. So, I would, I would, seven seven point three, I think, would be an absolutely fair score. Yeah, yeah it is. I'm probably going to say. Uh, I mean, I was expecting from this Belgian, like. I've I've not tried a huge amount of Belgian beers, uh, and uh, you know I had my first Trappist beer the last time we did a beer tasting day, but I would say I would have expected more from this on the aroma thing. Um, I'm probably going to say a six three, so it's not you know it's not awful. It's it's good. It's still it's still good. You know, yeah. So uh, the, the most important thing, as we all know, is the taste. So cheers, guys. Cheers, everyone. Taste. Wow. That's it's crazy. You've got the it's like sweetness. You've got the fruitiness from the ale. Um, it's, it's, it's got that real ailey fruitiness taste. There's, there's tons of taste. There's there's so much going on there. With the sweetness of the Belgian beer. Wow, that is. Um... This. Uh, yeah, I like it. The thing is, when I was like, oh, you know, with the smell, there wasn't a huge amount going on. There is ten, there's ten times more happening in my mouth than there was in my nose. Seven point seven for me. I'm getting like the, I'm get, I'm, I am getting the pepperiness, the the cloves uh, from from the hops, but I'm also getting like a really nice sweetness. And from the the flavour, it's like, um, it's like even though it's such a light coloured beer, I still get the taste of licorice as well in there as well, which is and it's really nice. It's lovely. One sec, one more, one more sip before I make this. Up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I reckon that's probably a, a seven nine. In terms of price, £2.90. I mean, you can get it at a lot of supermarkets. You can get that triple chem out, which is supposed to be amazing. You know, under three pounds. But this has come from the bottle shop. And when you go to Bruges, this is what they drink now on draft. And I, I think I've only ever found it on tap, maybe. Sorry, I only ever found it on bottle at maybe a couple of beer sites online. And they read about it. I've never found it so. 7.5. Okay, that's, uh, I think that's a, a fair score. Um, now, you know, it's, it's imported, it's a strong 
uh, well, over over a premium beer. What we call a premium beer is 5% plus, so it's, it's higher than a premium beer. It's a strong beer for us. I'm, I'm going to say around seven, uh, a dead seven, seven out of ten for that one. Um, and, and then the last thing that we rate on is sessionability. I can't, I can't sit and drink a six percent beer all night. You know, yeah, it's, it's never going to score ten out of ten for sessionability. I think it's not too heavy on the taste. It's not too heavy on the aroma, so it's going to do very well. I think maybe, probably with this one, I reckon I get a five point five. No, I'm going to go five point nine. 5.9 on sessionability, 5.9 out of 10 pints, which is a good sessionability score because it tastes great. And I know that it's a strong beer, but it's not an inoffensive taste. It's, there's nothing in there that's making me think, oh, I need to stop drinking it. 5.9. Sessionability. Now I know you said 5.9, and that's a high score for a uh, uh, five for me. If I could have, so give me 10 bottles of these, or if I was in a bar, and it was like Carl and all this, and then spirits, I would probably have maybe five pints of this, and then maybe move on to, onto the spirits. But I think five pints for a Belgian beer, because you're gonna have them in half, so you're gonna have 10. That's a full day of sessionability. So I think for a Belgian beer on sessionability score, I don't think that's that bad. I think that's great. And it's all around a great beer, um, it's a good beer. Maybe not, it's not a great beer. Um, Will, he, will it be a remembered beer? Yeah, I think it will. Um, and it definitely goes down well and brews, so. Right, but guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, click the links down below. It shows you all the beers that we've done before, everything about the beers that we've done today, blah, 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 all that crap. Just enjoy it. Oyster sheet, like, subscribe, smash both those buttons. Um, the oyster score for this beer is right up there. Right there. Yeah, go look at that. <laughs> yeah, just about it, yeah. um, which has been great. So thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Oysters out. Oysters out.